In addition to all of the experiments that the astronauts take part in on board the International Space Station, there are occasionally opportunities for students on the ground to take part in some of the space experiments as well. One of the programs that does that is Mission Discovery. It's sponsored by ISET and Higher Orbits, and we have Michelle Hamm, the founder and president of Higher Orbits and the U.S. director for ISET, on the phone today to tell us more about that program. Thanks for joining us, Michelle. Hi, Brandy. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Thanks. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, why don't we start by having you tell us a little bit more about what Mission Discovery is and what the uh, organizations that sponsor it are. ISET and Higher Orbits are both nonprofits that use space to get students interested in STEM leadership and team building. ISET is a UK-based charity run by Chris Barber that I am proud to be the U.S. Director for, and Higher Orbits is something that I've founded here in the U.S. Mission Discovery is a five-day program for high school and university students where we use space to get students interested in STEM. Frankly, I think if we can't get someone excited about science using space, we're doing something wrong. It's a five-day program where they work in teams, and the culmination of the week is that they have to design an experiment where the experiment can fly to space station, and the winning team's experiment actually does fly to space station. And I think um, y'all recently had some of the, the first um, experiments from that program fly. Is that right? That's correct. We are so excited to say that our first experiments have flown to Space Station on Orb 1 in January. King's College London students, well, they're from London. Our mission discovery was held at King's College. We have 12 students who participated in two experiments, one to test the effectiveness of antibiotics in space and the other to determine whether slime mold will grow three-dimensionally through air and microgravity. Um, both of those experiments launched on Orb 1, and we've gotten some data back that the students are very excited decided to start analyzing. So how do you gather that data? We were very lucky that Koichi was kind enough to take a whole lot of pictures for us. And so instead of the experiments being manifested back down, uh, they did come back with Orb 1 back through the atmosphere. And we have a lot of pictures to go through and analyze. And have the students begun, you said you've gotten some of the data back, but have the students been able to go through it yet? Have you, have you seen their reactions? So I have not seen the reactions as far as the data goes because our students are not all from the same school necessarily, and so we haven't been able to gather them all together yet. But I can tell you that after speaking, that speaking with the students at launch and after launch, they were so incredibly excited. This was such a life-changing experience for them. I mean, I don't know about you, Brandy, but if I could have my experiment flown into space when I was 16, 17, 18 years old, I'm pretty sure that would have been a game changer for me. That, yeah, that's a big deal for students. So how did, how did they go about designing their experiment? How did, how did they get started? Well, we give them very specific parameters, size, weight, power draw, but then we leave it open to them to come up with their own ideas. Our King's College experiments did have a biomed focus because King's College has a very, very prominent uh, aerospace med program, and so they wanted to take that slant. But with our other mission discoveries, we leave it wide open, engineering, crystals, biology, and so the students, it, this all comes out of their heads, and I am continually amazed at the ideas that these students come up with. Honestly, there are things that myself and the astronauts who are part of Mission Discovery for the entire week, there are a lot of times where we will look at one another and say, wow, would you have thought of that when you were 16, 17 years old? And a lot of times the answer is no, we probably wouldn't have. <laughs> That's great. So what do the, what do the students do with, um, with the results? What, where does it go from there? So our goal is for the students to work together to analyze the results to, again, foster that sense of teamwork, and then to foster the leadership skills that we're trying to help instill in them. We want them to take it back to other schools and present about it. We're not necessarily expecting that they're going to get a Nobel Prize out of their experiment efforts, but we do want them to help excite other youngsters about space and science and technology not trying to convince them all to be rocket scientists. I just want to show them that there's a great bunch of opportunities for them at the other end of a STEM education. Well, good luck. I that sounds really promising. Um, now that you've kind of gotten the first uh, set of experiments flown and have gotten to some data back, what, what's next? What, uh, is there going to be another set of experiments going up? or? Well, what's next is very exciting for us. We will have more experiments launching on Orb 3 in the fall, and this summer we will run at least five different mission discoveries, including mission discoveries at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical in Daytona Beach, Valparaiso University in Indiana, 
St. John's College in Annapolis, one in Renfrewshire, Scotland, and another at King's College in London. And we have a couple others that, that we're working on to bring uh, to bring to different areas, including potentially one in Houston. So we're very excited about the number of students' lives that we're going to be able to touch this year. That's great. Um, so if students were interested in getting involved in it, what should they do? They can check us out on www.mission-discovery.info and take a look. We welcome students on a residential and non-residential basis. So even if there's not one right in your backyard, you can travel to one and stay with us for the week. And it's unique because we do have an astronaut as a mentor all week. And I can tell you firsthand that the students get a great kick out of meeting the astronauts, but I think the astronauts enjoy getting to really know these students pretty well during the week as well. I bet they do. Thank you again for joining us. That sounds like a really awesome program, and uh, we're excited to learn more about it. Um, let us know. You, we'll check back in, I'm sure, at some point and find out uh, what the students learned from this first round of experiments and what, what's coming up on the next round. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Brandy. You have a great week. You too. Thanks.